probably the most basic idea that you'll want to come to grips with when we talk about markup is the idea of a tag. The thing that marks up the content has to stand apart from the content. And that thing that stands apart from the content we call the tag. Tags have to have a syntax. The syntax means the way you structure a tag to make sure that any application that reads those tags, or any person that reads those tags, can tell the difference between the tags. <laughs> I'm getting blustered here. Can tell the difference between the tags and the markup that's uh, associated with the tags. So you're all familiar with the, with, the, with the syntax of HTML, more or less. And that's, luckily for us, the syntax that we're going to use. Certainly not the only syntax of tags. And of course, the syntax of XML has angle brackets, and it has quote marks, and um, forward slashes. That's the, those are the main, the main pieces of the, um, of the HTML and the XML syntax. What does a tag have? A tag has to have a name. And the name, really, the better way to say that, instead of saying the tag name, is the unique identifier. Every tag has to have a unique identifier so that we know specifically what tag we're talking about. And of course, in, a, in, in HTML as well as in XML, those tag names take the form of strings aren't allowed to start with characters, aren't allowed to have any spaces in them, but basically they're strings with minor amounts of punctuation inside the string. That's the tag name, or better, better thought of as the unique identifier for the tag. Every tag has to have a unique identifier. Every tag has to have a delimiter, or a set of delimiters. Delimiters, as I like to say, set delimits on the tag. Where does the tag begin, and where does the tag end? What's inside the tag, and what's outside the tag? How do you tell the tag name from any other part of the tag? Those are all delimiters. So let's quickly go over the different delimiters that we're going to find in the markup that we'll work with. That HTML slash XML markup has, of course, open angle bracket as the delimiter for the beginning of either an open or a closed tag. And it has the close angle bracket as the delimiter of, as the, as the, delimiter of the end of either, either an open or a closed tag. Following the open tag, following the open delimiter of the open tag, no spaces are allowed, and, and after that comes the name of the tag. After that comes a space, if the tag has any other um, attributes associated with it. So if it has an attribute, like for example an ID attribute, or if it's p-tag, maybe it has a class attribute, there has to be at least one space, and more than one space versus one space doesn't matter, but there has to be at least one space between the, open tag, between the end of the tag name and the first attribute. Attribute has to be delimited on the left-hand side by a space, and on the right-hand side by either a space or, a, or an equal sign. Following the equal sign has to be any number of spaces, including zero, and then quote marks. And inside the quote marks are the value of the attribute. Those are the delimiters. Uh, do, tags also have open and closed parts, and we know that the open tag differs only from the closed tag in that the closed tag has the tag name and a forward slash in it. The forward slash comes at the beginning of the closed tag, there's only one other piece of syntax that you need to be aware of, and if you're not aware of it, it's going to kind of bite you at one point or another. And that's the form of syntax where we have, an, uh, we have a, a tag with nothing inside of it. The tag with nothing inside of it has the tag name, any number of delimiter, any, any number of attributes, and then a forward slash right before the delimiter that closes the open tag. In other words, it doesn't have a closed tag. It only has an open tag, and right before the end of that open tag is a forward slash. And that forward slash denotes that it has nothing inside of it. OK, tags have scope. That's whatever comes between the open tag and the closed tag. That's what the tag reigns over. That's what the tag is marking up. It's the information, the scope, the content inside the tag. We call that the scope. It may, as I mentioned, have parameters. Parameters is a more general form of what we think of in HTML as attributes. Those parameters are extra pieces of information that are associated with the tag. We'll see later that attributes in XML really have very little difference um, logically than child elements, but that's for later days. Right now, the, uh, the idea is, if it's markup, it has delimiters, it has tag, de tag names or unique identifiers, and it may have attributes. It may have parameters. Ooh! Hold on just a second. All right, that one's passed. OK. So, um, HTML is not the only kind of syntax, as I mentioned, and you'll see um, a, a much uglier form of syntax inside of your, uh, uh, inside of your uh, page here, and that's, and that's a RTF syntax. That's the old form of Microsoft markup, and you can see that that's just a bear to deal with. But 
what you should notice is that it has all of those same things. And if you understand the concept of markup, when you come across a new markup, which you eventually will in your career come across a new markup, you'll understand that you can not be baffled by all of that syntax and the slashes and the dots and all of those things and just see open tags, closed tags, parameters, delimiters, tag identifiers. Those are all the things that you have to know about and those are all the things that will come up no matter what kind of markup you're talking about.